Welcome to the next video of this Material UI version 5 tutorial. Today we will have a look at how to use the Material UI grid. The grid is actually based on Flexbox, so not on uh, the new or more or less new CSS grid to still be able to support or support all their browsers. If you know and if you have ever built a grid system yourself and really went into the details, you know how hard it actually is to build a nice grid with Flexbox, so with CSS Flexbox. Fortunately, Material UI already took that long and complex work and put it into a very easy to use grid system for us. So in this video, we're gonna check out how to use that. So let's go right into it. So before we start, I just wanna quickly show you the application. So we can see the Formula One app here on the side. We have a countdown to the next race. Here we have the actual next race displayed with all of the times even have this accordion here and then down here is a listing of all the uh, upcoming races and the previous races itself so we can see we have different elements here like typography grid icons we're gonna go through the app at the like with the last video of this series but i just wanted to quickly show you this application so then here, if you focus on the code, we can see we have a Next.js application. With the Next.js, we use that instead of create React app because I think it's just the best version out there to make your React app. But of course, Material UI will also work with any React framework or React itself. So you don't have to worry if this is Next.js. We also use TypeScript. So this is a type, for example, of TypeScript. You also don't have to worry about this will also work with JavaScript. So Material UI also works with JavaScript. The only other thing I want to mention before we start with the grid is that we use Material UI version 5 here. There is also um, version 4 was here for the longest time. So if you find documentation on the internet, it could be that it's uh, version 4, which might differ a lot from version 5. So just keep that in mind. So then let's go to my example I have prepared. I have this grid layout. We have here a simple grid, a mapped grid, and a dynamic grid, as well as a custom grid that I did. I'm gonna explain all of these and the differences and how the grid actually works. But let's go first to the documentation. So then here we have the documentation. We can see here, if we scroll down, we have a basic grid. And Material UI uses a grid base of 12. So that means that each um, layout has 12 columns. So um, you can see here the child uh, has eight columns that the, that the child takes up the space in and here four. So that equals, of course, four plus eight equals 12. So that's why the whole length here is used. We can also do that in different breakpoints. If we go here, we can see in the XS breakpoint and the MD, this will behave differently. We will see that afterwards in my example. And then another thing we can do is add the spacing. That's one of the nice things of Material UI that you can uh, define the spacing of the grid elements. So if we add a different spacing here, you can see the spacing between uh, child elements of the grid will be changed. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. So let's jump into the example. So here we can see we have this grid then if we enlarge it, we can see that uh, before there were um, 12, the child used 12 uh, of these columns and now it's just six, so 50-50 uh, let's say. So let's see how we can implement that. So for that, let's zoom out a bit here. So we are on a bigger breakpoint here in the small screen. So just a quick interruption, I just wanna mention that I started to offer consultant services. So if you're in the React space, so let's say React, the Next.js, Material UI, and you need some help with your project, you can uh, contact me and I can help you out in a consultation session, especially for small teams I have a, yeah, quite a big discount. So the, descript or the details for that are in the description down below. So yeah, let's continue with the tutorial. So first let's talk about what we have here. We have here a full width box. This is just to display what the full width of this container is. And if you have ever worked on a grid, you know that it's not so easy to actually do a grid with Flexbox. So I'm not talking about the new CSS grid. I'm talking about doing a grid with Flexbox. So here we have this flex grid. So let's go here. We have this flex grid here, the simple grid here, the mapped grid here, and then another new thing that I'm going to talk about later. 
So I created this uh, very easy flex grid. So we can see we have a box here. This is one of the material UI components. We will check that out in the next video, what that exactly is. But this is just a div with display flex on it. And then we have the children, which is also a div with a background color and the color. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. But if you want to do a grid, we might want to work with a margin, something like that. But you can see that the full width box is actually larger than the grid children because of course they have the margin here. So if you want to do that, it's all of a big hassle. So yeah, let's just delete that flex grid because it's way more efficient to just work with the grid that material UI provides out of the box. So if we delete that, we now have only the material UI grids, not a custom grid that I did myself. And with all of these grids, you can see that it really nicely spans all the way out to the container max width. How Material UI does that under the hood is actually with minus margins and stuff. You don't really have to worry about that too much, but that's how they do it. So let's check out the first grid, the simple grid, which is the one up here. We can see we can import the same component, so we can import grid from Material UI. And we have a parent element, which is this, and then all of these children elements. So these grid uh, children that we can put in here. The difference between the parent element and the children element is that in the parent element, we put this container props on and in the child element, we put this item prop on. So if you would want to delete the item, if you forget it, for example, to add it and we save, now you can see it doesn't really work anymore. So let's put them back on. And we can see we can define here the spacing. So the spacing will just be defined for the space between the elements. We can also, uh, instead of uh, use the spacing props, we can use row spacing and column spacing. So let's do that a little bit bigger. Then we can see the spacing between the columns are now bigger than between the rows. So when we don't wanna have the same spacing for the columns and the rows, we can use these props. Let's reverse that again. So then we can see here in the grid, we have this item and we have the XS and MD prop filled with these numbers. So here 12 and here six. That means in the brain breakpoint XS, which is the small one, the child will take up 12 of the available grids, which of course is all of the columns. If you go to a bigger breakpoint, it will use uh, six of them. What we could do, for example, is come in here and put in two. And then each child will use just two of the columns. And you can see here uh, four times two. So one, two, three, four times two equals eight. So not all of the columns are used. So what we can do here is come in here and fill in the space for the empty columns. And if you have more than 12, it will just break to the next line. So what happens, of course, here between XS and MD, there is another breakpoint SM. So what happens with that? So if it don't define anything here between the breakpoints we actually define, Material UI will automatically use the breakpoint of the bigger breakpoint for the actual breakpoint here. But it's easier if you want to find out more, you can just play around with it. So, but this is not how you're usually going to see the grid integrated in Material UI. So here, if you are a programmer, you shouldn't repeat yourself and we are repeating ourselves here a lot. So what we should do actually, or what you will mostly see is this mapped grid. So here we have a couple of items and instead of passing the grid uh, for each children, we can just map over the map, uh, over the items, put the grid in here as an item surrounded with the container. And then we can just map around and put our breakpoint values in here. And that's how we have a mapped grid. By the way, we can use the spacing also in a responsive way if you would add these types of prompts. Uh, of course, we have to surround it with curly braces. So now we would have a breakpoint or the spacing for each breakpoint. But that's just as a side note. So, and then what is a dynamic grid? The dynamic grid is actually a component that I built out myself. So if you go here, uh, or let's go back again, we can see we don't define actually the columns that are used. We define the max columns. So what, uh, what are the max columns? 
that the items should take on. So on XS, this would be one, on MD2, on LG3, uh, LG2, uh, up the way to XL, of course. So the dynamic grid does some calculations. So instead of us having to pass in here the grid as an item again, we don't have to do that. We just integrate the component that we want in this example, this diff or this box from Material UI. And the dynamic grid will actually map over these children. So these children here with this function, do some calculations. I don't want to go into them. You can check them out in the repo. The repo is linked in the description, in the description down below, but it will return this grid with the item and surround the child with it. And then what actually gets returned is we return this grid and then the grid children, which is again the grid item with the children itself. I hope this kind of makes sense, but again, you can check it out in the description down below. So I think that's a quite elegant way. We don't have to repeat ourselves here. We don't have to put always the grid. We just put what the component is that we want and what are the max columns are that we want to be displayed. And as we can see, it works in the exact same way as the others do. So this was already it for the Material UI grid, the base things you need to know, the rest you can read up in the documentation, or if you have any questions, just put them down below in the comment section. Let's see us in the next video where we're gonna talk about how to customize styles in Material UI. Hope to see you in the next video.